Welcome to Burning Questions, the interview series where we get real with B2B tech leaders by eating spicy food while asking 10 questions. I'm your host, Daniel Rodriguez, and I am joined here today by a brave soul by the name of Matt Hines, who probably needs no introduction, uh, the founder of Hines Marketing. Matt, welcome. Thank you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to just explain what we're going to be doing here, um, we're, going to do, we're going to do a series of 10 questions. Yep. You're going to be spinning the wheel before each question. And we are both going to then consume the very spicy food that okay. you land on okay. as a prize for getting through, yep. uh, you're going to be able to give a gift to somebody. Yep. Um, Alice is going to then do some research for us and mm -hmm. come up with some great gift options. Okay. Um, so who are we playing for today? We are today. We are playing for my wife, uh, Beth, who is home with our three kids today. And uh, I don't know what the gift is, but um, I sure hope I can get through this because <laughs> she, she deserves it. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, so uh, let's get real. Ready? Spin the All wheel. Right. Spin the wheel. All right. All right, the Conferno corn popcorn, the corn furno. Right, so look, it looks like it might be, um, you know, caramel corn. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's not. Um, it is, but there's ghost pepper in it. All right, what's a memory you have from growing up in Castro Valley, California? And um, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, when I was growing up, I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. Um, before that reaction. And I think I didn't actually know what an aeronautical engineer was. I just knew that I got that reaction when I told adults. And I'm like, <laughs> they seem impressed. That probably is a good thing to do. And then once I learned later what it was, I was still impressed with the job, but didn't necessarily want to do it. Um, you know, I think um, I early on wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a baseball player. I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and then in high school, I started to narrow down more on journalism and music. And that's kind of what I ended up uh, trying to study at college. But early memories of, of, um, of Castro Valley really revolve around baseball. I played Little League uh, every year, played baseball up through high school, and just have a lot of fond memories of the you know, crappy little Little League fields we played on and the teams we played on and you know, just the personalities of the kids and the camaraderie I had growing up. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Yeah. All right. How was, how was number one? Number one was good. It, was, um, it, was, it actually, what's funny is it actually was a good flavor. I mm -hmm. thought it, was, it tasted like popcorn. There was a little bit of definitely good caramel corn there. Um, you definitely feel it back here. Not too bad. Yep. I, I thought it was all right. Okay. All right. Good. All, all right. right. Let's. Um, but I know let's... It's, I'm not. We're only ten percent of the way through. It? <laughs> it's early. Yeah, it's early. It is early. I'm gonna get it again. Wake up hot sauce. Wake up this hot sauce. Wake this up one sauce. right here. All right. All right. So let's take a in, nug what's over in here. That one? This one. It's habanero. Has actual capsaicin added to it, I believe, which is okay. just raw heat. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. It's kind of um, liquid smoke, raw heat. So just going yeah, right over the... so just get a nice little dunk in there. Mm. <clears throat> mm, excuse me. So, looks like your first job out of college mm -hmm. was being a reporter yeah. at the Bremerton Sun. Yeah. What did you learn from that experience? Um, you know, we were talking earlier about journalists and train, and that trained journalists are trained to tell stories. And I was stationed down in Olympia, Washington, uh, at you know, the Olympia is the uh, uh, capital of Washington. And so my job was to cover um, state government news on behalf of Kitsap County and Olympic Peninsula, basically the entire peninsula where the whole rainforest is up there sort of west of Seattle. So you had these complicated topics that were coming up in government. Not only did I have to figure out how to condense them down to a short story, because the Bremerton Sun is not an enormous newspaper. There was no internet at the time. So you, you would usually have maybe six, maybe eight inches to write about a complex story from a Kitsap County bent. So the, the concept of taking a lot of information and condensing it down to something that is not only in a very short form, but easy for someone to understand, like why does it matter to me, uh, that, was, that was a challenge. And I think that that, I think, you know, I think about that today, we were talking about it, it's, you know, most of us are selling products that are not immediately understandable, right? I mean, it's not something you can explain in a two-story elevator ride. But how do you organize information such that you can tell someone the gist up front. Maybe you talk about the why first, and then the what, and then the how. So there's an organization and a science of communication that I think um, I was able to learn by studying journalism and then having to do it out in the field. <clears throat> so even though you were not writing things that were going on the internet at the time, we right. did dig up an article. Come on. <clears throat> From the Bremerton Sun? of 1998. My goodness. Do you remember this? When a charter school bill died in the Senate for the fourth time, do you I, remember covering that? I, of course, remember covering that. I remember covering that. I remember... Um, I remember calling uh, some 
some charter schools and some potential charter schools in the Kitsap County. Number one, it was being run by um, the Wisconsin Synod of the Lutheran Church. I didn't at the time know that there was a Wisconsin. I grew up Lutheran. I didn't know there was a Wisconsin Synod. <laughs> Very conservative, sort of small segment of the of the Lutheran Church. Um, yeah, I remember. I can't remember. I can't believe how you guys found that. I would actually like that link. So I <laughs> lost. I think somewhere I might have some copies of Remembrance on an attic, but. Um, We'll get it to you. We'll, yeah, we, no, that we was, that's well, fantastic. That's really cool. <laughs> that's good that you still remember it, too. That is amazing. I mean, gosh, it was 20 years ago, 98. That was, yeah, thanks wow. for reminding me. That's yeah, really I can't, I'm doing the math. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> question number two down. Okay. Uh, let's go on to question number three. I might need a napkin at some point here. Yeah, or a Kleenex um, or something, Because too. my nose is already starting to go, <laughs> and uh, it's early. It's early. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's roll it. Oh, oh, all right, spicy you... beef jerky. Okay, right. do we have I can, to eat the whole piece? I can confidently say that this is the weakest of all the items on this stage. Oh, thank you, Fatima. All right, yeah. No, th this is this is going to be on the chopping block actually in future episodes because it, it doesn't it doesn't even it it's doesn't not, register. Not good enough. Okay. All right, what advice would you give to your twenty year old self? A twenty year old self. Um, you know, usually when I tell people, talk to people that are thinking about going into a sales or marketing career, or people that say I'm thinking about going out on my own, doing my own consulting, two things I recommend they do is first, start documenting your ideas. Uh, it can be a blog, it can be videos like this, it can be a social media channel. Start sharing with people the way you're thinking and put that in a format where people can start to see your body of work, the way that you think. Um, <clears throat> past generations never had that opportunity. We had our, we had our resumes. Uh, we might have had word of mouth of other people we worked with. Um, maybe there would be like you know ex examples of articles. Like I remember taking my first couple jobs. I had a, I had a um, a physical clipbook that I would take and show people. Here's what I've written for my high school paper, my college paper, and whatever. Um, now we've got all that online, right? So I think early and often starting to create evidence of your of your ideas is one thing. Two is just to build your network, um, build and feed and and and, uh, and and actively nurture your network. And don't worry about. I need to meet the most important people. Don't worry about. It. I need to meet, um, you know, this certain list of people. Just be open and active and generous in that. You never know who you're going to meet and who they're going to become. Um, you never know what opportunity that might create for you down the road. Um, I think for a long time in my career, I knew the people I worked with and the people I used to work with. And um, you know, it was a couple of years before I started my business. I realized I need to go meet more people. And so that has there's a compounding effect and benefit to you as a professional. Um, and just as a person, just by enjoying life, by meeting interesting people, uh, when you can both share that body of work and then sort of nurture a network. Super important. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. All right. What you th what'd you think of the jerky? Well, unfortunately, I just took another bite. <clears throat> good. I think you're right. For the purpose of the, or the, the spirit of the exercise, it's tasty, but it's not. It's not crazy. No. Although I was kind of like, I don't know if it was just the flavor of it was kind of, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've had several other things. Well, there's, I mean, all three of them so far. I've enjoyed them. Like the first two were definitely hotter, but I've also they've been there's been flavor to it. Right? Okay. I mean, there may be some things in here where they're just like screw flavor. We're just gonna mess you up. Well, we'll we'll have to keep going and maybe and, uh, we may or because we only got ten questions we, and we may we have might we may not, circle back. We, yeah, I, you can circle back. Um, uh, <laughs> we may, are we gonna put just all jerky all the time now? <laughs> all right. All right. Let's give it a give it another real spin here. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There's All some right. more jerky. Okay, All good. Right. Well, that's that's almost it's allowing us to take it easy. Okay, you're All the host right. of the Sales Pipeline Radio mm -hmm. Podcast. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite podcast guest? Mm. Oh, I don't mind being hot, but you're not supposed to say talk while your mouth's full. Come here, second. Yeah. <laughs> My mom taught me well. Gives me time to think about that too. I think we've um we record weekly. Um, it's a live show that I think maybe two and a half people plus my mom listen to live on Thursdays. But then we've got a pretty good following on the podcast and uh, the um, RSS feed. I think one of my favorite one of my favorite people uh, on the podcast was actually Grant Cardone, um, just because you know he's kind of a big deal in the sales community and um, he was pretty hard to pin down, and he has a reputation for being um, having a bit of an ego. Um, but I actually found the interview to be very insightful, very humbling. Um, just he's he is a former car salesman that brings hustle and activity and volume to the sales game. And I think you know we can talk all we want about buying journey and about creating empathy for your customer and asking the right questions. 
But none of that's going to work unless you do a lot of that. Right? Unless you do a lot of prospecting, unless you try to talk to a lot of customers. And so his message around hustle and 10xing your results by putting in the work, um, it's not always the answer people want to hear, but it's a really important answer for people to hear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love it. Reps and sets, we were talking about it. I want those napkins, please. Yeah, yeah absolutely, a, sure. having the same kind of <laughs> symptoms here. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing good, we're 40% of the way shared, in. I'm doing okay. Shared items here. We haven't even touched the liquid. Are we, are, we, are we playing this sort of unspoken game of like who drinks the milk first is the loser? Well, you know, no, that's not an unspoken right. game, but now that it is spoken, yes, <laughs> now, we now are playing hard. that game. Right. Okay, here we go, that was question number four. Okay. Okay, here we are, number five, question number five. Oh, Reaper Salsa. Which one's that one? So that one is this one right here. There's okay. Carolina Reaper Pepper in that. So let's grab one of these chips. Well, and during pre-production, I was very clear that like this was on the news for like killing someone recently. Yes. Well, yeah. and I think I said that they um, they well, how ate. How big a scoop are you going you for? Just there? get like All a right. you know All we right. got the scoops for a reason here. We're we're, we're going <laughs> right. for something. All right. All right, in 2011 on a blog you wrote, hire only when it hurts when it comes to starting a new business. Mm -hmm. Do you still believe that? Um, I do. I mean, we basically, we, we practice that in our own business now. Um, I think, you know, if we feel like we're running out of resources to get something done, my first question is, are we doing it as efficiently as we can? Are we doing it the right way? If we were to do this again, will we do it the same way or will we do it differently? So sometimes when you're so busy in the, mean, in the, in the midst of doing the work and getting the work done, you don't stop and sort of look at the way you're doing the work. And I think there's always opportunity for improvement and efficiency. Um, you know, we've been lucky in that we've been generally a flat organization for the last two years, yet we've been able to grow our sales and grow our revenue throughout that period. And a lot of it has just been doing things better, doing things more efficiently, um, being more efficient at, at, at bringing on customers that have the same similar needs so that every, even though every customer is different in terms of what we're doing for them, the general process, the general methodology is similar. So we're not turning on totally new ideas. Uh, I mean, that's created for sure some greater efficiency. So, you know, it doesn't mean you don't like. It doesn't mean you like triple check before you hire someone. It doesn't want to mean you like just delay it until the last possible moment because then you might lose great people that are just overworked. Um, but I do think it means that you um, just use that as a regular opportunity to just double check that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. How? What did you think of that one on the? Um, I, I'm a little afraid, and, and not, I'm not taking scale. this as, a, as, a, as an invite to try another one. I think I got a big chunk of tomato. Okay. Which you know maybe you that's know, just the look of the draw. Yeah, sure. Yeah, get <laughs> absolutely. You know what? So I I think that so there's a, there's a few of these items here. I'm gonna grab this for the next question. There's a few of these items that um, have Reaper peppers in them. Mm -hmm. So this being one of them, and I think that the Reaper is a delayed heat. I think that the Reaper... You waited to say that after I took the second bite of well, it, didn't you? No, no, no. I, I was thinking it as... No, because I actually think I need to take a sip of water. All right, but water, water's fine. Um, Doesn't water accelerate it? Um, well, kind of. Uh, it doesn't... <laughs> See, I waited until it, I took it, the it second bite It doesn't decelerate it. Let's just put right, it that way. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Question number six. Okay, that's that's nice. Getting there. Getting there. We're halfway through. Halfway through. So far, so good. We made it. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Wake oh, up, hot sauce. The wake up. Oh, we're back to we're that back one. We're back to this one again here. Okay. You've got like a consistent roll. We're going to need to get you to... i got to do it either faster or slower. Uh, something. Yeah, this right. this is one, This is actually my least favorite of all of the things is on it? here. All yeah, because right. they just added capsaicin, so they just added heat. So I, I think it tastes terrible. Okay. In this segment, I'm going to show you a series of pictures that you've posted on social media, and you're going to provide me with more context. The people viewing will see this on the screen. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn this around and show you okay. this series of three pictures. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm a huge college football fan, <laughs> and um, Dr. Pepper the last three or four years has been doing these ads featuring Larry Culpepper, and he is a Dr. Pepper vendor, and he's always doing these interesting things either in the stands or in the parking lot. And um, this year I'm like, it would be really fun to dress up as Dr. Pepper, Dr. Larry Culpepper. And um, so I was going to make up my, trying to figure out how to like, Manufacture my own. Um, sorry, that one's on my tongue. <laughs> manufacture my um, my own costume. And if you go to Doctor, probably still today, you go to drpepper.com slash Larry Culpepper costume. Mm -hmm. They will sell you that whole getup for about twenty five bucks. There you go. And um, 
I mean, I'm, I, mean, it, I mean, you think about all the things that went on to it. it. Had the knee brace and everything. Yeah, they're probably selling it at cost. But if they could have a whole bunch of Larry Culpepper running around for Thanksgiving that are taking pictures of themselves, work. marketing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's what I do. do you drink more Dr Pepper because of this guy? I don't drink it at all. There you go. That horse did not like me. <laughs> um, so I was on a. Uh, we were on a retreat. So I'm in this entrepreneurial group, and um, every every spring we do a retreat. And this particular year, we did it in between Bryce Canyon and Zion National Park. So this is just inside the park um, uh, boundaries of uh, Bryce. And so we all took horses and just kind of went up into the into the hills. And um, I don't ride horses a lot, and there were a lot of like valleys, and so they would go into these like little culverts and then come back up. And you know, you had the reins, but like they've done this path a million times, and you would go flying down this little ravine and then back up and i was swore like and a couple of times like past the ravine was like thousand foot like fall of death yeah that horse didn't like me but i had fun um that is batman <laughs> i met batman um i was at a conference that was in new york and um I mean, it's they, a pretty legit batman that is a serious legit batman <laughs> and he was in character too like he was he talking was, he was, like no he wasn't he wasn't talking much he was just looking around kind of doing this he was not using his neck he was just kind of moving like this and um, he, uh, yeah, he was he was cool, but he just kind of stood there with a little smirk on his face. Um, and there, we had no connection at all to the company. He was just he was just a super legit. That was the best costume I've ever seen in Batman. It's <laughs> fantastic. All um, right, I've got um, water coming out of everywhere right now. You know, I, I'm also it's camera. just it's not stopping. Like this is just <laughs> it's just staying there. I'm gonna have to hit the milk soon. Um, I was at Dreamforce four years ago, yeah. and Bono was there, and we yeah. got pictures of him at our booth and everything. Yeah, he's like that foot, that, that tall. Yeah, it, and this guy, guy was, yeah. yeah, and it was not Bono. It was a Bono <laughs> really? like, and we thought it was actually Bono. It All was right. All right, and I, I'm happy to share this photo if, if, if you've got notes in the thing. Yeah. I was at a conference in San Diego, and there was a, um, there was a party at the Air and Space Museum in San Diego, and in the middle of it, this Tom, uh, Tom Cruise lookalike comes out, dressed like Top Gun. The slick back hair, the like toothy laugh, you had the whole thing going. It was just brilliant. Yes, it was fantastic. That is so good. It was good. It's a weird way to make a living, but hey, I mean, if everyone's going to be telling you you look like a guy, someone's got to do it, right? There's a market for it. That's right. All right. You are sweating. This is good. I like seeing this. It means we're working. I'm going to kind of get sweaty in general, we're but working. this is like an accelerant. It is, it is only 70 degrees in here, just so you know. Um, <laughs> it's, okay. it's 32 degrees in here. Everyone else is wearing parkas, and I'm sitting over here. <laughs> Here we go. Question I do number a little faster. seven. All right. Oh. Are you, like, this is like 60 minutes. Are you close up on my eyes right okay. now? Okay, yeah, get the zoom oh, in good. there. Oh, good. Ghost pepper, okay. fantastic. Okay, ghost pepper jelly beans. Okay, we got the jelly mm. beans here. Grab, grab a few. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll, like... I'll, take, I'll take three. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so you work with a lot of high t growth tech companies. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a shift? toward more account-based activities versus more broad net marketing activities? Yes, um, but I'm not often seeing the account-based stuff replace everything else. I'm often seeing account-based um, you know, become an augmentation and, or a, a, um, an enhancement of what people are doing. So in many cases, if you're trying to go after enterprise cost customers, in the past, you may have been marketing to decision makers of those enterprise businesses, but there was no integration between what sales and marketing is doing. Um, there's no coordination of the members of the internal buying committee. So you're selling into GE. There's not like one guy at GE is making a decision. There's a buying committee that's going to do something. So you want to build some consensus amongst members of that buying committee. Um, you want to get them all. <laughs> I'm actually not upset. I'm not kind of just as, <laughs> right, now that I can feel the tears going down. Um, Got to wipe it down. I'm trying to have a serious <laughs> conversation here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is, the, this is the best idea ever. Can I, if I can, please volunteer some people for this? That would be that'd be great. I'm sure they would be thrilled that you've done that. No, they would. I have to think very carefully about that. Um, this is fun. So um, yeah, no, I think there's like a couple of years ago, everyone was really into social selling, and I kind of had a feeling that social selling would become a real, ongoing, sustainable thing when we just started calling it selling. So I like that account-based marketing has forced marketers to better integrate their activity with sales. I like that it has forced marketers to think about coordinating behavior inside the buyer in that buying committee. But ABM is really just better marketing. It's just better go-to-market coordinated strategy to increase velocity and conversion of your biggest deals. So you know, oftentimes we need those bright, shiny objects or those hashtags or those movements that can get us to think a different way. And when we settle into maturity of that, 
it just becomes better sales and marketing. And we're, we're well on that path. Love it. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. How are we? I'm fine. Good. I'm good. You seem fine. <sighs> Question number eight. Here we go. This is getting very real now because we're really in it here. Now no, we've got a good is, um, base. Yeah. We've got a good base built up. Yeah. And we just keep going. The Reaper Salsa. Come on. This is the one you went back to, by the way, because I think that you thought it was, what, too tomato -y. Well, the, the first one I was afraid, I didn't know if I got the full, but I'm, I want to do this right. I don't want to cheat. I no, want to do I this love the right it. way. You got a good scoop there. Um, well, I actually sure. don't want to, now I'm like you, I don't want to go back the, to the, This one is it, right? I don't want yeah, yeah, to go back to wake up. That was a. No, that's terrible. That was not a wake up. No. Yeah, get a good, hold on. There we go. Yeah, that's good. All right. What's the most thoughtful gift you've ever received? Um, I'm, hopefully, if, if I cry, I'm just gonna I'm gonna blame it on the um, I'm gonna blame it on the hot sauce. Um, my dad passed away earlier this year, and um, he had um, thank you, he had pancreatic cancer, and um, he was diagnosed like a year and a half before. And with pancreatic cancer, it's a death sentence. And you know, usually once you're diagnosed, it's, there's no symptoms, and so most people are diagnosed stage four, which is bad. And most people live weeks to months. He lived a year and a half, like like typical dad fashion, shot the hell out of the bell curve. Uh, which was highly fortunate because my sister and I got to spend a lot of time with him in the last year and a half. Got to say things to him we wanted to say. Got the kids got to spend some time with him. Um, and my sister um, really started sort of using the hashtag Heinstrong when she would post pictures of, uh, of my dad um, kind of in those last days. And um, my team, when he passed, they got me a gift and it's a wind chime. And um, the note on the wind chime, excuse me, the note coming in the box I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a it was a verse from the Bible in Psalms talking about sort of God speaks in the wind, and um, the little the little piece of wood at the bottom of the chime said Heinstrong. Wow. Um, and so obviously a custom gift, and um, I mean it's in our backyard, and it's super ass sensitive, so we hear it all the time, <laughs> and it's just it's my dad talking. It's my it's just reminders of my dad. It reminds me, reminds me to think about my dad. And, um, yeah, that was very. Fun. That's an incredible story. That gave me goosebumps. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. All right. <clears throat> We're down to the home stretch here. How many more? We have two of this. Question number nine. Question yeah. number nine. Okay, now this may seem a little crazy, but can we do like, you know, like Oprah does after the show? Because we're, we're probably going to not get to do everything. I'm kind of curious now. You want to you do bonus. Um, I'm, I guess, I'm, I mean, if, we're gonna, if I'm going to try some, we might as well have questions behind them. We can do. We can just keep it. We can keep the train rolling. Yeah, I mean, roll nine and ten, and then if there's something we don't want to do, we'll just I mean, go. We just say like, how long does it take for one of us grabs the milk? We'll go bonus. Oh my god, <laughs> it's to the death. Is that what we're doing here? I it's hope like not. no. Let's no, not, we're not do doing that. that. Oh, I'll just start drinking. No, I, I'll just drink the milk. <laughs> just I'll just it, drink the milk right now. now. My my tongue hurts. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. <sighs> Oh, the so you know what? Why don't we yeah, just respin that? I agree. Respin that. No one needs more of the jerky. I don't even ha I barely yeah, have any dude. left. We don't need that. Okay, a respin here. The reaper. I think you're on the same. You're on the same path. So we've had three. Should we do that or Wh should we do another one? Why don't, why don't we do the de bomb salsa? All right, salsa. let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Man. I'm feeling I've got a little stomach that, ache. That last one. I don't know if it's a stomach ache or if it's a hole in my stomach. Yeah. I. Yeah. yeah. It's eating away, eating our stomachs away. Mm. This is ghost pepper. That's got a that's got a good flavor. It's a little sweetness. Yeah, just to just to match the the pain. So, I've listened to a lot of your stuff. You know, I'm a big fan. You talk a lot about marketing, making sure that they are tying what they're doing to revenue. Yeah. You know, why do you think it is that most people seem to get this wrong? Oh, I don't know that, so it's interesting you ask the question that way, because I don't know that it's people that get it wrong. I think that marketers have not been trained to embrace revenue responsibility. I mean, most marketers act as a glorified arts and crafts department where the job is to generate awareness. The job is to generate the condition for sales. In most organizations, sales owns the entire buying process. They own the entire sales process. And marketing is fine with that. Because marketing feels like marketing is marketing. Marketing is the ideas. Marketing is the is the images. Marketing is the the visuals. It's the condition to sell. Um, even in companies, excuse me, where that is the case, I still think marketing has a responsibility to do things that are aligned with the sales process. Just to do things that get someone's attention may be interesting, but it's got to lead to something, right? Um, you know, if we just if you just did videos of people just sitting just eating hot sauce, like that might be entertaining, like cats running around on Roombas and living rooms. 
but the conversation we're having here and the topics make it more interesting and more relevant to your audience, right? So I, I, I also think that a lot of marketers feel like owning revenue and having revenue responsibilities outside of their control. And that is a scary thing. Um, I would say to those marketers that I have yet to meet a salesperson that has control. That has control of when deals close. I mean, if we're talking about those complex buyers in enterprise companies, they don't have control either. So if we take control off the table and simply say, listen, your organization is going to be here or not if you close deals or not. You have a job there. And I think the future of marketing, B2B, B2C everywhere, is embracing metrics you can buy a beer with as the ultimate goal. Nice. All right. This is it. We made it. This is question 10. All right. We can, I guess, choose to do bonus questions afterwards. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that one was kicking, by the way. Yeah. I don't know if you... Um, my it, nose is sweating. I don't know if that's coming in clear I, I here. I feel like but. that one was... Um, that was a slow burn. Like I didn't feel like that one was like really hot up front. Yeah. But now like I can feel it in my mouth. I can feel it in my tongue. It won't go away. Yeah. Ghost yeah. pepper. Yeah. It tends to do that. Whew. I want to try the pickles. Let's get pickles. The pickles, pickles are the pickles are pretty pickers. weak. Look at uh, this. No, you are no, on no this jerky. Hold on. What I really want you to roll is the times up. Oh, the times up. If we're yeah. gonna choose something and do something crazy, it's the I think it's the most delicious and it's I think the, the spiciest of the things. Yeah, okay. Right. Corn Inferno popcorn. Right, this fine. is also. I'm doing two. Is... I'm not going to do two. I'm just going to look at you fine. while I'm eating two. Fine. All right. Last year, you said something to the effect of AI is already replacing marketing people, but in the foreseeable future, I haven't seen any AI technology that's able to give a one to one personal experience. AI tools have just aided to the betterment of the field. Yeah. So this whole idea of displace versus augment, Yeah. five years from now, do you feel like it's still on the augment camp or do you feel like it's more on the displace camp? Well, it's a, what, did you know when I wrote that? Was that a year ago? Was that a year? This was a year. This was, this was June 22nd of 2017. Yeah. Almost to the day. I think it is. Um, it's true. I think it is, it is already replacing some roles. Um, when I was at the uh, PR agency, um, part of my job when I was early in my career was to write um, trip uh, books. And so we would, have, we would have executives with products launching go on uh, press tours. And we'd have like four meetings one day, five meetings the next day, go to the next market. So I had to write up sort of a summary of those individuals. There are now tools that will just press of a button like create that for me, do all that work for me. Um, there are tools that will now do all my lead scoring and tell me who my salespeople should call right next door. Um, you know, I can go and I can do a ton of manual research to find the prospects I should be calling. Or like I was speaking at the Zoom Info conference, I can just use Zoom Info and tell it what my priorities are and it will give me my target list. So we're already replacing some of the tasks of marketing with machines and robots. Um, as a marketer, that's exciting, right? Like it's cheaper, it's faster, it's just, it's more accurate. There's less margin of error. Um, I don't know that we are going to see just a, a, a humanless sale, especially in enterprise. I think that there's always a level of customization. There's a level that we want to see the whites of each other's eyes. We want to shake each other's hands. I want to work with people I trust. Um, maybe there's a day when we just trust computers. I don't think it's five years from now. But I think we still want to work with people we like. We want to work with people we trust. It doesn't mean that you're going to get the deal just by being a relationship seller. You have to have ideas and insights to back that up. But I do think that um, I think that human element isn't going away, especially in the more complex deals. Yep. Yeah. Well, you've you've made it. I did. You've made it, and that was a <laughs> impressive. Let's just say. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you saw this, but I actually was drinking some milk yeah, that's near fine. the end. I'm not. I'm not judging. So, I, I, I. Um. It just. I, I would have gone for it. I think I did. I just like I told you earlier. Either. Either. Um. Either my my palate is maturing or my taste buds are all dying off because yeah. I was. I was hot. It was. But it was also. It was fun. It was good. Yeah. Good. Well, congratulations. You made Thanks. it. You've. You've earned the prize. We can okay. do bonus round. You should just eat some of this. Well, it's just, if you're that, gonna, so I do want to try a, a pickle as well. But maybe eat I'll a do pickle. the. Uh, just use your hand. We've got them out there for you. Yeah. Um, pickles are tasty. They're just habanero, so they're not. Uh, okay. They're on the lower 
end of the spice spectrum. But yeah. once you've got all this ghost pepper on our mouths, like well, at a certain still, point, it's just it's it's, it's just, just, uh, just it's all it's all already in there. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. So so Alice, you know, did some research. Yeah. Um, looked at the information about Beth, your wife. Okay. Good. And um, saw that she loves country music. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, she she was showing that she'd been to some shows. Mm -hmm. um, so. You're going to get to choose one of these three things. So, okay. um, a StubHub gift card that she could use to get some more country music tickets. Okay. Um, saw that she has a beautiful family. Yeah. I know that that is from her, not you, obviously. No. Um, and uh, you know, you got three kids. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there is a you know, Fly High Sky Zone trampoline park. Oh yeah. Um, near you that. Uh, that, that you could go to, a jump for five. Wow. Um, so you'd have to participate in this jumping. All right. And uh, if Greg Siegel, the CEO of Alice, is listening, do not do that, because that's how you hurt yourself. Um, but you should do that. Okay, all right. Um, and um, and um, because she's a country music fan, um, a Bose micro Bluetooth speaker. Oh, that wow. That she'd be able to go along, uh, <laughs> listen wherever she wherever she wants. Wow, that is super generous, I appreciate that. I would, um, I think I'm doing the trampoline. Trampoline park. I think that would be yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I think the kids awesome. would love it, I think Beth would like it, that would be fun. Good, thank you very okay. much. Okay, well thank you very much Matt for, yeah. for joining me. Did appreciate you it. did you want to finish with one, are we gonna do a bonus? Well you keep talking about the time's up. I think New we gotta bonus? do the time's up. Is, yeah. that, is that chips, what do we do, do with I have that? To, uh, it's a nug it's actually, a nug. Right. let's, right. let's have the. Are you gonna do it? Well. No, you don't have to. You can just have a chicken nugget. No, I. It's actually pretty good. This is this is a you know my son would be proud of this one. He's he's a fan of this of this sauce. So this sauce, so this sauce has great mustard on the front. Yeah. And then and then just goes off. Six seconds later, you're like, wow, I didn't realize didn't realize what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so bonus question. Yeah. What's a charity that that you're into, that we could make a donation to on your behalf. Oh man, I really appreciate you asking that. I think um, um, there, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is there is a uh, there's a pancreatic cancer uh, fund nationally. Um, the, you know, the color is purple. Um, so we've been, you know, we've been encouraging people that, you know, in memory of my dad, just to donate there. The two that my wife really believe in is uh, one is Catholic World Relief, just uh, World Hunger. Um, they do good work. I think literally only seven percent of what they make goes to administrative costs, so they are super efficient. Most of, the, most of the money goes to the field. And then there's another organization that's actually through Krista Ministries based in Seattle, and they have a, a worldwide uh, vet service. So, you know, a lot of companies, you know, organizations focus on people's needs. Um, there's a lot of people's pets that don't have proper care. And so they have vets that go out in the field and just take care of animals in need, um, domestic animals. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. Yep. Great. I'm sure we'll be able to find him <laughs> yeah. um, on our own platform. We can yeah. we can make those donations on on your behalf. Awesome! Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you again, Matt, for joining appreciate us. It. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations! Thank too. you, you made very it. much. All right. <laughs> I need a T-shirt or something. <laughs>